Hi, and welcome to your 24th iOS programming tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create a basic calculator application within iOS using Xcode. It will be able to take in two numbers and then do one of four operations to that, those two numbers. Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. And we might even add things like square roots and other basic equations which aren't too difficult to do once you know how to do basic maths within iOS and Objective-C. So let's get started. Open up Xcode and create a new project. For this tutorial, I'll just be doing a single view application. However, it doesn't really matter, and once again, none of these options really make any difference to the actual coding of the app. So create your project and save it, and then let's get started. We'll begin our storyboard by creating the layout for our calculator application. So the first thing to do is to drag on two text fields, and those will be where the user can enter the numbers. So let's drag in the first text field, and make it about half of the screen width, and then copy and paste that text field, and put it on the other side of the screen, obviously. I'm just going to make both of mine slightly smaller, because in the middle of that, we'll add a label, and that label will have our operation. So for now, for the standard, I'm just going to do a plus sign in that label. Make sure the label is also centered, and then drag that in between the two text fields, so this evenly spaced. You can change the look of the upper bit, it doesn't really matter. So you can do that afterwards. Um, that looks fine for now though. So then we need our four buttons, an add button, a multiply button, a subtract button, and a divide button. So drag on, well we've got two options here. One is to use a segmented control, where the user selects what they want to do to the number, and then have a button, and when you press that button, it will do the maths, and so that's what we'll do. The other option would be to have one button for each, but again, it's always up to you. So, create a segmented control, and if you don't know how to use a segmented control, there is a tutorial on how to do that. However, it's not necessary to watch. So, in the first one, I'm going to change the text to add. For the second one, I'll make it subtract. Third can be multiply. And finally, divide. And then underneath that, there'll be a, a compute button, or an equals button, it would be fine. And the reason I'm typing the word equals is just so it stands out a bit, and it's obvious, because an equals sign might be a bit small for the user to tap on a phone. Underneath all of that, we're going to add a label, and I'm going to make that label the whole width of the screen, center the text to make the text a bit bigger. And you can find a cool font that looks a bit like a calculator if you want to. You just click on the T button, select custom for font, and then find a font that you think looks good. I'm going to use copper plate for this. In here, you just enter a number, so I'll just enter 12. Um, not for any reason, just in case something goes wrong with the app, we won't do full error checking, obviously, because it is just a basic app. So if for some reason the app doesn't work, all that will happen is that the number 12 will appear for every equation. Now we need to hook up all of these outlets and actions and start adding the code. So I'll do the first few and then I'll speed up the video a bit so you don't have to watch me add all of the connections. Essentially, let's go into our, our assistant editor by clicking on the tuxedo icon. And then make sure you've got automatic selected and view controller.h. Now, we need to create all of our outlets first. So, let's begin by right-clicking on the first text field and dragging it in between at interface and at end. And we'll call this first number. And that's the UI text field storage strong connection outlet. And then the same for the second text field. So, second number. And then that plus sign in the middle, because we'll need to change that depending on what they select. So, we'll need to change that between plus, minus, add, and so on. So that one we can just call our operation label and then segmenting control and so on. So just follow along, I'll speed this section up a bit. Okay, so that's done now. Let's go back into our single editor 
and navigate over to viewcontroller.m and we can start adding the code now so the first thing to do is uh, well we should detect when the operation is changed and then we can go okay so if the operation is plus then make that label plus and so on so let's type if operation what do we call our uh, self dot operation segment and control dot selected segment index equals equals zero so if it's that first segment that was addition and then we know it's addition so let's add a comment then we want to go self dot operation label dot text equals at talking mark talking mark semicolon and just plus then underneath that type else if self dot operation segment control dot selected segment index equals equals one and that's subtraction so self dot operation uh, label dot text equals at talking mark talking mark and then minus so I'll just copy this code there and then change one to two and then one to three here and then this one should be times so multiply and here it is divide so for division we could have a slash but let's make it a bit more natural and add a division symbol to do that in the top menu which you won't be able to see on my screen in the top menu xcode file edit uh, view find and so on click edit and then click special characters here you'll see all special characters emoticons and so on and we can see if we can find a divide symbol if you can't find it just start typing divide and see if anything comes up. So the only one that comes up is in a box, but if you type div, then we suddenly get a few more options. So I've done uh, circled anti-clockwise rotated division sign, supposedly it's called. Um, and so there are all our signs done. So if we were to run the application now, and let's do that, hopefully what will happen is when we change the segment, that label will also change. Okay, so if I click on by default add and the plus sign, if I click subtract, then it goes to subtract, multiply, and divide. It doesn't do any more than that at the moment though. So let's now start adding the code to actually compute the result. So in here, uh, this is where we'll add the code to compute the result. So let's copy all of this code within operation change, and we're just going to modify that a bit. So get rid of the code self.operationlabel.txt because we don't need that. So get rid of that for all of them. And once that's done, your code should look something like this. I'll give you a moment to catch up if you haven't already got this. Okay. So now under addition, we need to set up the code to get our result. So let's create above all of this an integer. And an integer is a number. So you might know ns string is text, so int is a number. You can do ns integer or int. I'll just do int, but again, that's up to you. Unlike a string, it's not a pointer, so you don't need that asterisk. So we'll call this int result, and then let's do the addition first, and we can go from there. So if the segmenting controls value is zero, then it's addition. So then we can go result equals and then we need to actually create two uh, other ints, which is the first number and the second number. By default, when the user enters a number into the text fields, that number is going to be text. It's not going to be recognized by iOS as being a number. So we need to get that text, convert it to a number, and then we can add the two numbers together. Because obviously, if you add two strings, you'll just get string and then another string. So we obviously don't want that. So int number one and then we can do int number one equals self dot first number dot text and then close square brackets and the opening one will appear automatically and we need to type int value and integer if you're using an ns integer here then do uh, integer value if you're using an int then use int value it makes no difference to the actual code though otherwise and then we need to do the same thing for number two and that will equal self dot second number dot text int value. So all that's doing is getting the text from our text fields and converting it to a number. For example, if I were to enter 1 in the first text field, 
By default, that's just text. It's just the the number one. It's not actually a number, so it's just text. So we can't add two text values together. So we're going to get the text, and then convert, and then what is the value as an integer? If it were an integer, what would this value be? And that's what we're setting number one to. So then result equals number one, and then it's as simple as typing plus number two. And it's really that easy. So our result integer, so the end result number one, and then the operation number two, is just number one, and then the operation number two. So it's pretty much plain English with a semicolon at the end. So this here, we're saying if the operation segment control, so that control of segments that we had, if the first thing is selected, that first tab, the first segment, if that's selected, then that, that says addition, so we obviously want to add the two numbers. So we're going number one, which is the text of our first text field, plus, so we're adding, so we're adding number one to number two, and then what are we doing with that? Well, result is going to now equal number one plus number two. So we need to copy this code here, uh, copy it for subtraction and paste it inside subtraction, and change it to the plus to a minus. Do the same for multiply, except don't change it to the letter X, change it to an asterisk. And then for divide, don't do the divide symbol, we'll do a slash. So other than multiply and divide, it's all pretty natural. And then at the end, we actually need to set our label's text. So we've now got our result as an integer. So we've now got the number that it equals. So let's just display it in that label that we had. So self dot, and then we need to get our text field, which was result text field. No, what do we call it? Let's go into view controller dot h and check. Uh, final result label. Final result label dot text equals, and if we try typing result here, it wouldn't work. What you'll see will happen is that we get an error. The error says, implicit conversion of int to ns string is disallowed with arc. Essentially what that means is we're trying to set text, which is an ns string, to be a number. So instead we just need to convert our number to text, like we converted our text to number up here. So to do that, type ns2 open square brackets and then ns string alloc, and I'll just do a few more enters just to make sure you can see that, and then init with format, and do the really simple one that just has one bubble for ns string comma dot dot dot. Inside there, do add talking mark, talking mark, and inside of that, do percentage D. Then, outside of the talking marks, do comma, result. Now, what we're doing there is we're saying, uh, let's see what the warning is that we've now got here. And the error is that if none of these are true, so if segmenting control does not equal, is not the first segment, not the second one, not the third segment and not the fourth segment, then the result doesn't equal anything. So then we'll, the app will crash. We've got no nothing for results. So Xcode's being really helpful here because it's pointing out that really we need something that if the segmenting control for some bizarre reason isn't one of the four options, then result's going to equal just nothing. And so we can't set it as text and that would cause the app to crash. Now that's very unlikely. If something were to go wrong, maybe the segmenting control would not have a value. So let's underneath this type else, and then we can set result equals zero. And now our error's gone away, and essentially what we're saying, if none of these are true, so if the segmenting control isn't the first, second, third, or fourth segment, so something weird's happened, then let's just say that the result equals zero and leave it at that. And then, of course, we're saying our text, so our label's text, and we'll set that to be a string, but the string's going to be formatted, meaning that it won't just be text, it will be, it could be text and an int, it could be text and a float, it could be any variable pretty much displayed as text. So we're saying percentage %d means integer. If we wanted to display two strings together, we would do percentage at, percentage at, because percentage and then comma the two strings. But here we're doing percentage %d, and percentage %d is the shortcut for integer, comma, and so what, what is percentage %d? Well, it's result. So let's run the application now and see if it's still working, and it should be. Okay, so we still need to set this text here to be nothing in our storyboard, and there's another one thing that we'll need to do in our storyboard in just a moment to finalize this. But let's first test it out. So I'm going to try adding, and as you can see, it's come up with text keyword, so we don't want that, and that's the other thing we'll change in our storyboard, as well as maybe moving our text from the being aligned to the left to the right on this one, so that it looks a bit more natural when they're next to each other. So let's just try three 
plus and we'll do plus 7. So the answer, sh if I click equals, this should say 10. As you can see, it does. If I change this to 11 and click equals, it's going to be 14. Now if I click subtract and then click equals, 3 minus 11, that's a bit odd, but it still works. We get negative 8, and that's correct. I can multiply 3 times 11, so that should be 33. Or I could divide them. So 3 divided by 11, that's going to be a fairly long number. But, because it's an integer, we can't display decimals. Now, the way to fix that is to change it to a float. So all we need to do then is go change this text here where it says int to float result. Down here, change, click on the error message that you get, and then do what it says to fix it with. So change percentage G to percentage F. Let's run it now and see if that's fixed the problem. And it might crash because we're doing a floats equaling two ints. Anyway, let's see. 3 divided by 11, if we divide them, should be 0 point some obscure number. As you can see, it is. Uh, we don't have enough uh, room, though, to display it. Let's try something simpler. 5 divided by 2. Now, let's see if we can get a decimal result here. So, 5 divided by 2 is still not working. And so, we can look into why that is. And it's probably because we've got these as ints, and we could try changing this to float value, float value, and changing these to floats as well. Now, if you're getting confused here, you just don't bother doing this. This doesn't really matter for a basic application like the one that we're creating. However, it's worth knowing if you are interested. 5 divided by 2 equals 2.5. So now we get it. And you can round it to two decimal places or one decimal place if you want to. I won't show you how to do this in this tutorial, however. But if you Google it, you should be able to find out how to do it. Let's quickly go into our storyboard and fix up those three things that I said we would. So the first is, now that we know that the app's working, let's get rid of the number 12 here and just delete it so that there's no text, so you won't be able to see it, obviously. Let's change um, this first text field, go into its properties in its attribute inspector. So let me move these objects down a bit. And we need to change alignment to be right, so justify to the right. And then, while I still clicked onto this first text field, click command and then click on the second text field. So now both are selected. Now under keyboard, let's select number pad. Run the application now and you'll see a different keyboard that stops users from entering text. Obviously in the simulator you can use your computer's keyboard to enter text, but on an iPhone it's no longer possible to enter any text. So I can enter 2 plus 3 equals 5. And as you can see, because we've got a float, it has gone to all the decimals, but ignore that for now. So that's how to create a basic calculator in Xcode, and... Throughout other tutorials, you'll see how to make this calculator better. Not necessarily the calculator, but you'll learn new things that allow you to make better calculators. And I hope you found this useful. At the start, I did say I would show you how to do square roots and things, and that's really simple. All you need to do is add a new segment to the segmenting control. You can type else if segmenting control equals 4, which would be the new segment at the end. Then we just want result to equal number 1 times number 1. Because, after all, squaring a number just does that number times that number. In a way, this is like algebra. You've got two variables, and you're doing an operation to those two variables. So, if you've got any questions, comment on this video, message us directly through YouTube, visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com, and get in touch with us, with us there, or get in touch with us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash 99centsappdevelopment. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.